So I got this question that says, how do I manage retainage in QuickBooks Online? I'm a new bookkeeper for a construction company. Okay, that makes sense. Let's take a look at the definition of retainage in Wikipedia so we can all be on the same page. Retainage is a portion of the agreed upon contract deliberately withheld until the work is complete to assure the contractor or subcontractor will satisfy its obligations and complete the construction project. The typical retention rate is 5%, which half is released upon completion and the other half at the end of the defects liability period. Okay, so essentially retain niche, not to be uh, confused with retainer. Retainers are a different concept and I'm gonna put a link in the description on a video about retainers more typical for like lawyers and some professional firms to charge a retainer and then charge by the hour against that retainer. Retainage is an entirely different context and we're gonna explain it within uh, an example of a construction project. So we're in QuickBooks Online and there's two types of retainage that you could see that you could be managing. One is a retainage that you as the user of QuickBooks, you as the business owner, you as the accountant in that business are gonna hold back funds from your supplier. So instead of paying your supplier 100%, you will pay them 95% and withhold 5% until they complete their end of the deal. That's one type of retainage. That's the retainage in which you are withholding. The other type of retainage that you could be managing is your customers. They're gonna be retaining money from you. So every time they pay you, they'll withhold 5% or whatever, and they won't release the whole thing until the project is completed, or maybe a year after the project is completed. That stuff would be lined up or lined out in the contract. So the underlying contract between the two parties, typically in a construction project, but you could see it in other contexts, the actual contract would outline what the retainage would be and what are the conditions to release that retainage. So let's do both examples, but first we need to set up the account that we're gonna to use to track that retainage. So I'm gonna click on the gear menu, top right of the screen, click on gear, and then click on chart of accounts. That's the very first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna make sure we have a retainage receivable and a retainage payable account. We need to have both depending on the context that we're gonna use it for. So let's go into new, we're gonna create a brand new account and this is going to be a other current asset. So here it says account type. We're gonna select other current asset. That's gonna be for our retainage receivable. Now you will notice on detail type that if you scroll down, retainage is actually one of the detail type options. Now, you don't have to pick that. This is just an example of how QuickBooks Online tries to guide you in terms of understanding what options fit best under the specific account type that you picked. So again, other current asset is your account type. Detail type, doesn't matter what you pick, but we're gonna pick retainage to, um, to be consistent there. Under account name, we'll put retainage receivable. So we do retainage, let me spell that correctly. So retainage receivable asset. I like to do, like just sort of go one more step and put asset at the end just so we understand the concept. So this is the money that our customers are withholding from us. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save, and there's my retainage receivable asset. I'm gonna go to new one more time. We're now we're gonna create the liability account. Under account type, we're gonna scroll down and select other current liability. And then under detail type, there should be an option for retainage, but in this case, there isn't. And again, QuickBooks is not perfect, like there should be one, uh, but there isn't. Uh, if you actually choose long-term liabilities, same thing, you actually don't see that there. So for some reason, uh, QuickBooks Online isn't consistent with their detailed types. So in this case, we could pick uh, something like other current liability and that would be uh, fine. Again, it doesn't matter what detail type you use. And then we'll put here retainage payable, retain a payable liability. Now, typically the word payable already means liability and the word receivable already means asset, I mean, so there's no need for you to add that in there, but I like to be extra explicit um, so it's easier for us to understand. Okay, we can even add, if you want to, to the name, 
we can put uh, withheld, withheld from suppliers or something like that. Okay, so it's like we are withholding the money. So we are withholding the money from the suppliers. So it's a little bit more explicit. And then I can go back into my other uh, retainage account. We'll click on the little drop down menu, click on edit, and then we'll put here in parentheses uh, with held by customers. Okay, so we're going sort of the extra mile on making these accounts super explicit so we understand we understand them. So we're gonna do, I'm just gonna type retainage here. So we see our two accounts, retainage receivable asset withheld by customers, retainage payable liability withheld from suppliers, right? So this is who's withholding and, and who, who is being the money withhold for, okay? So that's pretty clear there. Both of my accounts are set up in my chart of accounts. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the gear menu top right, and then I'm gonna select products and services because I, I have to actually create an item or a product or service in QuickBooks Online for it to be used to track the retainage inside my forms, inside my bills, inside my invoices, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go to new here on the top right, go to new, and I'm gonna create a new service. It needs to be a service item. Don't use anything else, use a service item. So in this, this one, we're just gonna call retainage. That's simple, retainage, simple, easy. Now, down here, in terms of whether I sell this item or I purchase this item, I'm gonna select both of these because I, I both use them in a sales transaction, that's when I put it in an invoice, or I use it in a purchase transaction, which is when I put it on a bill, okay, on a vendor bill, on a supplier bill. So in a sales transaction, I'm gonna pick here the stuff that my customers withhold. So I'm just gonna type the word customer because we actually put you know, retainage receivable asset withheld by customers. So now we know exactly which is the account that's gonna get activated if that item or that product or service is used inside of a sales transaction, inside of a customer transaction, like an invoice. And then on the other side, I'm gonna type here uh, suppliers, and I'm using that because I actually added that to the name, but it's the retainage payable liability, which is the account that's gonna be used within the context of when the transaction is used in a purchase transaction, in a vendor supplier transaction, okay? So like the word supplier, we could have put, we could have put vendor or we could have put subcontractor, whatever is easier for you to, um, to read. So we'll do save and close. So now I have my retainage uh, item in there and that retainage item is gonna be used in the transactions depending on the context. So let's start with the first one. I'm gonna go into new, I'm gonna go into an estimate. I'm just gonna create an estimate really quick. And let's say I'm gonna do an estimate for this customer, Joe Mitchell, kitchen remodel. So that's my customer project that I'm doing this for. And let's say that the whole project here, and I'll just pick uh, one of the items here. Let's say that the whole project here is $15,000. I'm just kind of simplifying. The project here is a $15,000 project. I'm gonna click on save, approve this estimate or approve this, uh, this project, convert it to an invoice. And let's say I'm going to only invoice 20%, because that's what we're doing. We're doing progress invoicing. However, on top of the fact that I'm only invoicing my customer 20% of the whole project, my customer is actually gonna hold back 5% of the total dollar amount that's inside that exact invoice, okay? So if the invoice here is $3,000, which happens to be 20% of the whole project, and forget the percentages because they could be confusing, just the invoice is $3,000 and our customer is gonna hold back 5% of that. Not 5% of the whole project, 5% of whatever's being invoiced. So the second line item, this is where we're gonna put retainage, okay? And, and we only need one item called retainage. And if you remember, we tie this item to our, um, to our asset account because our customer's withholding it from us. But now this needs to be a negative amount, okay? So this would be, um, this would be a 5%, five, five okay? Which actually QuickBooks doesn't let you use uh, uh, percentages. So what you have to do is you have to put negative, negative 0 0.05, that's a 5%. And then on the rate, you put the total dollar amount of the invoice, okay? So that way it knows to calculate, okay, we're gonna multiply 
the uh, the three thousand dollars of the invoice times 0.05 or hundred and fifty uh, dollars. So that's exactly what's being retained. Now, if you want to skip all that, if that's way too complicated, you can just type uh, retainage, and then here on the total amount, you can just type three thousand times 0.05, which is the same thing as five percent of three thousand. Hit type, and then let the system come up with one hundred and fifty dollars. Just make sure that you add the negative sign to it because your customer is not paying you. They're withholding payment, which means that they're going to underpay the 3000 So that always needs to be a negative amount. So whatever you think is best, I actually like doing negative 0.5 and then $3,000 here because it's actually easier to read once you kind of understand what's going on. So we can just put here uh, retainage. 5% on job or something like that. Okay, so whatever you want to put there. Then I'll click on save and we'll just kind of take a look at, see what this invoice looks like once you print it. And it's very simple. There's my 20% of my project 3000. And then there is my 5% being withheld. Pretty simple, pretty clear. That should be easy to understand. Okay, let's do one more invoice here. And I'm going to pick a different project altogether. Let's pick this backyard remodel and I'm skipping the estimate process for now just to kind of simplify our life here. And let's say we're gonna use uh, multiple items. Let's say we have three different items. So we have labor, materials and equipment. And uh, so we have labors, materials and equipment, okay? So let's say for labor is uh, 10,000 or 10,000, materials is 5,000 and equipment is uh, 1,200. So now we have a total of 16,200. What I normally would recommend if you have multiple lines is to add a subtotal. Okay, adding a subtotal typically is helpful. That way we see it right here. We can see that what the subtotal is and we can put a uh, total amount. You type here, total amount invoiced for phase one or something like that. Just whatever, whatever makes more sense. And then we'll add the retainage right under it. And again, we can, we can type here uh, 16,200 times 0.05, right? and then just make sure you add a negative. Okay, so if that's the way you want to do it, that's one way to do it. Or you can just put, as I mentioned earlier, negative 0.05, and then 16,200. I'm just copying the number from up there, which is the same uh, negative 810. So we'll save that, and we'll see what this looks like. Let's do a PDF view, and you get to see exactly what that looks like. It's pretty clear. Just again, just make sure you add some line description to the retainage if need be. Okay, so that uh, that's two examples of retainage, how it works within the context of the, the invoices. Now, I'm gonna do one more thing here, which is I'm gonna receive the payment in one of those invoices, just to kind of like throw things off here. So let's do the kitchen remodel. And then for this uh, 2850, I'm gonna go ahead and receive the full payment on that. I then click on save and close. So one of my invoices is open and one of my invoices has a full payment. That way we can kind of see the context when we see the reports. Um, we're gonna talk about the uh, supplier version, the vendor version of this briefly. Let's just start looking at the reports to see what retainage looks like. So I'm gonna go into reports and then I'm just gonna pull up a regular balance sheet. Simple, easy, regular balance sheet. Click on that and then we should be seeing a retainage receivable asset account on their current assets, which is $960. If I click on that, I'm able to see the entire history of the transactions right here. We have two different transactions uh, for two different projects, Joe Mitchell and Mary Garcia, and it's 150 and 810. So we know exactly what's going on. We, we know that our customers owe us $960. What's cool here is we can group these by name click on run report, and then these two can be grouped together. Just collapses, a little bit easier to read. So there's my two totals by customer, by project. So it's very clear, we know and have a very clear understanding of what's going on with these um, retainages. Now, let's assume that for one of these, uh, we're gonna invoice the customer the other uh, piece, and also let's say we're gonna invoice the retainage as well. So. This one customer, Joe Mitchell, owes us $150 of retainage. So we're gonna invoice that, let's say, later in the future. Okay, so let's do that now. We'll do the, the example now. So we'll go ahead and uh, let's just do a quick 
invoice here, we'll open that in a new tab so we can keep our report alive. And then let's just double check again. This is the Joe Mitchell kitchen remodel. So let's say after we've done all the invoices, uh, it's been a couple of months, the contractual agreements uh, went through and now we're gonna get paid that retainage. We're gonna get our money back, the money that our customers owe us. So all we have to do at this point is just invoice the retainage and I'll put here 150. This time is a positive amount because we're not discounting it from the invoice. We're now getting paid the remaining amount of, uh, of the retainage. So we'll save that. And then essentially when we go back into our reports and click on run reports, we now should see that for the kitchen remodel job, we had the 150 taken out and then we had 150 uh, paid back. So it's very sort of clear uh, how what's going on, how these things are being taken away and then being paid back. So we know that the total amount of retainage for that particular customer is zero, it's cleaned out. Actually, if I collapse these here, we get to see what the um, actual total by customer is. So it should be pretty easy to read. I mean, I'll make it a little bit easier to read if we um, bring this screen a little bit to the right here and zoom out. We'll click on this little gear button and then click on re reorder columns and we'll grab this uh, amount and put it right there, uh, let's say on the second line. Click on run report and then we can collapse these again and then we get to see them right there. Very easy to read, very simple way of knowing what's my retainage uh, per customer. Same thing if we have a secondary invoice for this backyard remodel. So I'm just gonna open up this invoice here for a second. And I'm going to duplicate the invoice just so we can see um, you know, just more numbers, more, more, more variables here. And let's say this time is 25,000 and this is 17,900 and this is 1960. Okay, and then we'll just come in here and do the 44,860 here, 44,860. Again, we're still using 5%, but let's say for this particular case, the retainage is 10%. Again, we're just using different examples here. So you kind of see what that looks like with a 10% retainage. Then we'll click on save, and then we'll X out of that, go back into that report, click on run report, and now we get to see the total amount being retained. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We can know exactly what's going on with all of our customers and all the retainage receivable. This is the stuff that our customers is withholding from us and they owe it to us, which is why it is an asset. When we go back into the balance sheet, it is our, our asset, it's, it belongs to us. It's just like an open invoice, but instead of it being an open invoice by itself, it's sitting as a retainage receivable. That way it's very easy and very clear when you look at the balance sheet exactly what's going on in there. Now, let's talk about the other side of the coin here, which is what happens when you are withholding retainage from your vendors. So let's do an example. So we'll create a new bill here. And let's say we're gonna get a bill from Garcia Plumbing, and then Garcia Plumbing is gonna charge us for uh, some sort of subcontractors, contracted labor. And then this is going to be, let's say, uh, eight, $18,000, okay? And I'm using the category details here, which allows me to then go straight into the retainage payable liability. And then in here, I'll put the 18,000 times 0.05, and then just make sure that comes in as negative. And then uh, the subtotal here, 17,100, is the one that contains the plus and the minuses for that bill. Now that's if I wanna use the income, I mean, the uh, the accounts directly, the, the instead of using items, I can choose to use items as well. So if I were to use items, I'll pick whatever um, item I have for labor. So let's say it's the same 18,000 here. Okay, and this could be um, you know 18 times 1,000, right? Whatever the combination is, doesn't matter. Is the total amount really the one that matters? And we'll put here the project, whatever project it belongs to. And then down here, we'll put retainage. Same thing, and then we can use the same logic we used before, which is 0 0.05 uh, negative, and then in here we'll put 18,000, and then this will do the calculation for me. So if you were to use um, a purchase order, a purchase order will flow through the bill just like this. So it will look into the item section and not the category section, but the result is the same, 
at the end of the day, um, your, your, uh, your reports will look exactly the same because we tied that item to the correct account in the balance sheet. So we'll save that and then we'll X out of that and then we go back into our balance sheet report. Now we see our retainage payable liability of $900. We held it from our vendors, right? So once I open that and I see exactly, this is for Garcia Plumbing. If I group these in this case by vendor, click on run report, I know exactly uh, which vendor I owe uh, each of that retainer to. Now we'll do the same thing as we did before. I'm gonna create one more uh, bill. That way we have at least two of them. Now I'll pick a different vendor here. Let's do here, John the Contractor. And let's say this one is gonna be 17 times 890. And then this will be, let's say, a 10% retainage. And remember, uh, rate, I need to copy the same thing from the amount. So this is 15, 130. So I'm just copying from the amount here so we, uh, we know what we're subtracting the 10% from, okay? Then I'm gonna click on save. So it's an entirely different bill. And as I alluded earlier, we're gonna have one that's paid and one that's unpaid. So you kind of see the dynamic when we switch to cash and accrual, which we'll gonna do in a second. So I'm gonna mark this one as paid uh, and then I'll click on save and close. And if you remember, the other one wasn't paid. So we'll go back into the, um, into the retainage report and both retainers are showing here, the 900 and the 1513. However, if I actually click on this little um, gear menu for the table and I go down and I'm gonna check uh, this little checkbox that says AP paid, and I click out of that, one of these is paid and one of these is unpaid. So if I wanted to know what is my retainage payable liability only on bills that I have paid, then I can switch this report to cash basis. So when I click on cash basis, I click on run report, the one for 900 doesn't show because that's an unpaid bill. So same sort of situation we would have if I go back here and do it for my customers, same thing. If I click on to look at the drill down the detail of my retainage receivable asset withheld by customers, and I group these by customer, I click on run report, I can click on the little gear here on top of the table that reports and do this time AR paid. So that way I'll know whether the transaction has been paid and unpaid. I notice that one of these is unpaid. So if I actually switch these to cash basis and click on run report, only the stuff that's been paid shows and everything else that's unpaid will not show. So let me show you a run report. And then this will only show the ones that are paid. So it's pretty cool. Accrual shows you both paid and unpaid, and cash only shows paid, okay? Um, there isn't one that would only show unpaid. <laughs> I guess that's, you know, that would be the, the question. So you either only see paid on the cash basis or see both paid and unpaid on the accrual basis. If you actually go into customize and go into filter, you can actually go in here and look for AR paid and you can select, with the filter, you can select, in this case, unpaid, and click on run report, and that could be one way for you to show only the unpaid uh, transactions that show up here under the retainage account. You st still will have to stick with accrual. If I go to cash and click on run report, it just blanks the report because there's no such thing as unpaid cash transactions. So you would have to pick accrual and then pick that filter uh, for unpaid, or you can uncheck it if you wanna see both paid and unpaid, and it works the exact same way on uh, bills as well. So with that being said, I hope that was, ho that was helpful. Uh, that's how you manage retainage, uh, mostly within the context of construction. And like I said, look in the description. I'll put links to other videos that are similar to this, other videos related to construction. And also, um, if you were looking for retainer, which is a different concept, I'll put links to that as well. Thank you. See you in the next one.